Hi, my name is Molly McCarthy Kunfer, and I work for the Alaska Department of Fish and Game, Division of Sportfish, and today I'm going to show you how to can salmon. I have an American pressure cooker right here, that's what I'm going to use. I have a variety of jars, some salmon from dip netting last summer that I saved just for this purpose, some spices, and I think I'm ready to get started. So the first step in the home canning process is sanitizing your jars. I have some jars that I've already used before. You can reuse jars multiple times, but you must sanitize them. The way that I do this is I take my jars and I put it in a pot of boiling water. So I'm just going to fill this up with four jars and get those going. I usually leave the jars in here for a few minutes until they're nice and sanitized and clean for me to use. Another way to sanitize jars is putting them in your dishwasher if you're doing a lot of canning. Um, that's just another alternative. So I have my jars in, I'm just going to let them go for an, a minute or two in the boiling water and then I'll take them out. So these jars have been boiling for a few moments, so I'm going to take them out of the hot water bath. I'm just going to pour all the water out, set them aside to dry. Once I finish all of the jars, I'm also going to put my lids in a hot water bath as well. I want to make sure that everything is clean and sanitized so that all of my canned goods stay preserved well. Okay, so now that all of my jars are sanitized, I'm going to also add my lids to the hot water bath. Uh, the lid comes in two parts. We have the ring and the seal. You can reuse your rings as long as they're not rusty, but once you use your seal once, you should discard the seal. And just like the jars, I'm going to let these boil for a few moments. Once these are done, I'm ready to start the next step. Now that all of my jars and lids have been sanitized, I'm going to start cutting my salmon. So I'm going to grab a fillet right here, and I'm going to just make a cut right down the center. And then I'm going to make another cut right here. I like my pieces so that I can stack them in the jars like this. So I don't want them to be too long or I'll have to shove them down. It's really up to you. You can cut them in whatever way. You can just shove them in the jars, whatever works best for you. I'm also using bony pieces of salmon. This is because the canning process actually softens the bones. So you don't have to worry about picking out pin bones when you're putting your fish in the canner. That will soften them right up. One other thing to note as I'm doing this is I'm using good looking fillets of salmon. The canning process is not a way to save freezer burnt fish. You have to start with a good quality fish to get a good quality canned product. So make sure that your fillets aren't incredibly freezer burnt or too old to do anything with. You want to make sure that that fillet is in good shape before you even can it. So make sure to care for your fish adequately out in the field. So you can do a multitude of things with the skin. Um, you can see my skin's on, the fish still has its scales. I just leave that on um, and I eat it with my canned salmon. Some folks like to skin their fish before they put it in a can. That's completely fine. So you can just remove the skin before packing your jars and then you won't have this layer. Other people scale the fish before they do that so they don't have scales to deal with. It's up to you. It's whatever your personal preference is. When I finish my last piece of salmon, I'm just going to move my cutting board out of the way and I'm going to move my jars right in so I can begin packing them. So this will just go in my sink. I'm going to give my hands a quick rinse and I'll move the jars right in to begin packing them. You can see that we also have some spices. You can pack your salmon into jars and keep it just plain. It tastes great as is. A lot of people like to experiment and put other things in their jars. Um, I have some dill, basil, jalapeno, um, all different stuff. So just feel free to experiment. But make sure when you're putting different things in your jars that you're marking the lid with what you put in it. That way if you have a flavor that you really like, you'll know what it is. Um, and the same goes if you have a flavor that you really don't like, you'll also know what it is. So to pack my jars, I'm just going to grab a piece of fish. I pack it with the meat side out. That way I don't end up with a bunch of scales stuck to the edge of my jar. So I'm just going to pack that. 
and just keep sliding pieces in. You can really pack these jars pretty tight up to this first ring right here. Once you get there, you want to leave that head space for uh, your fish. All right, so that jar is done. And this is just going to be a plain salmon jar, so I'll just leave this as is and I'll set it aside. And I'm touching these jars with my fishy hands. I'm going to be sure to wipe these off completely before I put them in my pressure canner. So you can notice that I'm using um, wide and narrow mouth pint jars for this. It really doesn't matter if your jar mouths differ. What matters is the size of the jar. So I wouldn't want to use pint jars and half pint jars because the cook time in the pressure canner differs for these different size jars. So your mouth sizes can be different, but make sure the actual jar size is the same. Okay, now that all my jars have been packed, I'm ready for my final step. I'm going to take a nice looking jar right here. I'm going to look at that rim and I'm going to wipe it clean. That way if I got any chunks of salmon on it, it is free of debris so that my jar can seal nicely. I am going to add a few spices to this jar as well. I'm going to just put in two pieces of jalapeno and shove those down in there. Okay, and double checking to make sure that my rim still looks good. It looks good. So I'm going to grab my lid. My lid is dry. If this wasn't dry, I would wipe it down so it was dry. I'm going to put that right on top of my jar. I'm going to grab a ring and I'm just going to tighten this ring down. You don't have to super tighten it. Just tighten it gently until it's in place. The final step I'm going to take before this jar is ready, I'm just going to write down that I put jalapeno in it. That way if I can't see the spices, I at least know what's in there. And then today's date. And I'll set this aside so it's ready to go in the canner. I'm gonna continue doing the same process for all the rest of my jars. So I'm gonna do my last two jars just plain. Put my lids on. them and then we'll get the pressure canner going. Okay, all my jars are ready. Now I'm going to begin prepping the pressure canner. So now that my jars are all packed and ready to go, I'm going to fill my pressure canner and get it over to the stove. When I'm filling this, I want to make sure I'm putting two to three inches of water on the bottom. This is going to change based on what types of jars you're using. You want to make sure that your jars, when you pack them all in the bottom layer, aren't floating in the water. You want to make sure they're still nice and firm at the base of your canner. But you do need water, so make sure you're putting at least an inch in. So I'm going to wait for this to fill and then bring it over to my stove. Okay, so I have enough water in my pressure canner. I'm going to move it over to my stove. The one thing I want to be cautious of is when I put it on the stove, there's a little notch. I want to make sure that notch is facing me. That's going to ensure that my weighted gauge and my dial are aligned and I can see what's going on with the pressure canner. Just grab this and bring it over to my stove. Okay, so just to show you, this is that small notch I was talking about that you wanna have facing you. So now I'm gonna start loading my canner. I'm gonna just take a jar and put it on the shelf. There is a small shelf that you wanna make sure is on the bottom layer of your canner when you're doing this. And I'm gonna put in, I can fit seven jars in the bottom of my pressure canner. I could fit eight if I was really squeezing them together, but I want to make sure that each jar has plenty of space. I don't want any to be hugging the edge or touching. So I want to make sure that they have enough space that they can all move around a little bit if they do and not smash into each other. So I have my first seven jars on the bottom. I'm now going to put the shelf. This is what I was talking about having on the bottom. I'm going to put the shelf on and add my next layer of jars. 
So this pressure canner can fit two different layers. Um, depending on the jar size you're using. If I was using large quart jars, I could only fit seven jars and that would be it. Since I'm using pint jars, I can fit 14. When I'm loading my second layer, I wanna make sure that as I'm loading, I'm going opposite sides so that the shelf stays nice and stable and it's not wiggling around and tilting. Once I have enough jars in, I can move things around so they fit a little bit better. Okay, my last jar is in. The next step I'm gonna do is prepare my lid to go on the pressure canner. To prepare my lid, I have to do two things. Um, the first thing I need to do is rub some type of oil or Vaseline along the edge of this lip. Some people just keep a small container of Vaseline with their pressure canner. But you wanna make sure this whole rim is coated in some type of oil or Vaseline to help seal that pressure canner in. You can do this on the lid or right on the rim here. It doesn't matter either way, it's just to get that surface. You will know really quickly if you didn't do this because once your canner starts to come up to pressure, you'll have a bunch of little bubbles coming out of this seam. That means you forgot to seal it, so you'll have to cool, let it cool down, put the, put the oil on the rim, and then put the lid back on. So I'm going to grab my oil. I just use some olive oil that I have in my kitchen. I just pour a little bit into the cap and then I use that to do that edge. And I just use my fingers. And if you're doing a few different loads in your pressure canner, it could be that you still have plenty of oil to keep that seam uh, closed off on your second round. So you don't need to go too, too crazy with this. Okay. So my whole rim has enough oil on it. The last thing that I do, which isn't completely required, it's just something that I do to make myself feel better. Since this thing is under pressure, I want to make sure that the, the steam can escape and pressure can escape. So just as a little safety precaution for myself, I like to make sure that I can see through this vent. So I just hold my canner up take a look through it, focus on something. I can see through mine perfectly. There's nothing clogged in there. So I feel, I feel confident that this isn't going to cause any problems. So as I mentioned earlier, you wanna make sure that this notch is here because there's a tiny arrow on the top of your pressure canner that aligns with that notch. That allows you to see your geared gauge. So I'm going to just align that arrow, turn this, and then I'm gonna close it. So there's these wing nuts. I close opposite sides first, and then I'll just work my way around the canner. I'm now ready to turn the heat on and get this going. I'm gonna leave this on high. The next thing I'm looking for is steam to start escaping from this vent. That means that everything is, is getting hotter, the water is starting to boil, and once I see steam starting to escape from the vent, I'm gonna let it do that for 10 minutes so that everything is up to the same temperature when I put my weighted gauge on this. So that'll be the next step. We'll wait probably 20 minutes or so until this gets up and um, steam starts coming out of the vent. Now that I have my weighted gauge, I'm ready to put it on my pressure canner and get it up to pressure. I looked in the book that came with my pressure canner before I started doing this, which noted that for canning pint jars of salmon that's raw, I need to put this on 10 pounds of pressure based on my altitude, since my altitude is below 1,000 feet elevation. So I'm gonna line that 10 up with my vent, and I'm gonna come in from the side and slide that right on top. At this point, I'm gonna let my pressure canner start coming up to pressure and build pressure. Once it hits 10 pounds of pressure, I can start my timer. Now that our canner is up to pressure, I can set my oven timer for 110 minutes or an hour and 50 minutes. Be mindful when you're setting your oven timer, it works an hour. So if you put in 110, you will only be canning for 70 minutes, which is not up to safety standards. So be mindful of this. So I'm gonna put in an hour, and 50 minutes, press start, and the canner will be going for that amount of time. You'll get to listen to these lovely sounds for the next hour and 50 minutes. 
if you do notice that this seems to be working extra hard, it's getting louder, it's venting more, and you see your gear gauge goes up to around 13 or 14, you'll have to turn your stove down just a little bit. Don't turn it down too low because if your pressure drops below 10 pounds of pressure, you're actually recommended to restart the entire process um, all 110 minutes starting over. So just be mindful of this as you're going. I seem to have found a good adjustment on my stove. I'm just over 10 pounds of pressure and hopefully we'll stay this way for the next hour and 50 minutes. So we're down to our last 10 seconds of canning. As soon as the timer goes off, I'll turn the timer off and turn my stove off. And there it is. And all I'm going to do is turn the stove off. I'm going to leave this here until the canner comes down from 10 pounds of pressure to zero so that it safely decompresses. If I were to pull this off right now, it could cause all of my glass jars to shatter. So I don't want to do that. So we're just going to let it be and simmer down on its own. Now that my geared gauge is back down to zero, I think I'm safe to remove my weighted gauge, but first I'm just going to give it a few taps to make sure. I'm not hearing any more steam escaping, so I am safe to take this gauge right off. Now that the gauge is off, I can loosen my wing nuts and get my pressure canner open. So I'm just going to, and you'll notice I'm using my oven mitt because this pressure canner is extremely hot. This can burn your skin. So make sure that you're wearing something that'll protect your arms and your skin when you're opening this up. Couple more to go. Okay, all my wing nuts are off. I'm now safe to open the pressure canner. When I open this, it's going to have steam coming out of it. So I want to make sure that I'm not opening this towards me. I want to be opening it away from me. So I'm going to just shift it over to the side and I'm going to open it back. Now that my lid is removed, I'm safe to start taking my jars out of my canner. I'm using a jar holder right here. That way I'm not grabbing into there because these things are very hot. So I'm just going to grab my jar and move it over onto a towel where it'll cool off. I'm going to do this for all of the jars in the canner. And some of them, the lids aren't going to seal. It's going to take a little bit for that signature pop to come off of the cans, but it will happen. All of my jars from the top row look pretty good. I'm going to use my jar remover to also take my shelf out. Maybe just a little assist from my thumb. This is also very hot, so be careful when you're taking this out. So I'm just going to take this out, put it off to the side. Okay, now I can take out the bottom jars. You can hear some of them already starting to seal. Okay, so now that all my jars are out of the canner, I'm going to let this completely cool down before I wash it. I usually leave this for at least an hour to completely cool off. I'm also going to just leave my jars here to cool off as well. I don't want to be stacking these when they're this hot. I want all the bubbling to stop. When that's done with, I want to make sure that they're all sealed. And by doing that, you can just run your fingertip over the tops of them. Sometimes it can take a little while for them to seal, so don't be discouraged if in the first five minutes everything isn't sealed. It can, it can take some time. So once those are all done, I can wipe the sides off so that any residue from the canning process is cleaned off. This is optional, if you, only if you want to. Um, and then you can begin enjoying your canned salmon. So thank you all for coming and watching this video, and we hope you do some great home canning after watching this. Thanks.